um, with a client. And so I and so I couldn't get in. God, I put my little fancy lights on at the back. They make no well, it was a bit green, a bit blue. Pink next. Makes a bit of a difference. Anyway, good uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever in the world that you are. Um, I was looking at some f recap figures yesterday from the stream so far. We've been doing this twice a day, every day for a, uh, what would this be? This will be day 20, uh, no, 12, 12, day 18 or something like that. And I said I would do it for a month. So we've got sort of 10 to 12 days left. Um, and I... Um, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know if the toy box is going to be finished in time, but we've covered so much. And I was looking at recap figures yesterday. We have had thousands of viewers from five continents that we know of, that we can see in our viewing figures between Facebook, Twitch, Mixer, um, uh, YouTube and Twitter. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Um, and so that's fantastic. You know, for live streaming, that's fantastic. I mean, I think the fact that everyone's stuck in their house and has nothing else to do, might help with that. But anyway, today, I wanted to explore something very specific. I wanted to explore Minecraft and the natural world. I talked briefly yesterday about how I thought I would do some more aesthetics, but actually, there's more to do than aesthetics. And I want to talk about Minecraft and the natural world, and how we can use Minecraft to model the natural world and help children look at the... Um, and look at how the natural world is modelled in Minecraft as a digital environment, but also how we can bring the natural world to life. And so let me show you a few things that we're going to be looking at today. We'll start with um, just a standard world. We're just going to go in. We're using Minecraft Education Edition, but of course you can use Minecraft Java. You can also use Minecraft um, Bedrock, regular Bedrock on things like the Switch, the Xbox, uh, the PlayStation and so on. But if we click on New and then we call this natural world. Uh, we're then going to make it creative. Let's go through this together because we always do creative because we're going to be creating peaceful because we don't want monsters, but we do want mobs, which we can explain later. Doesn't matter because nobody's going to be joining us because nobody can um, because of some of the multiplayer issues that we've been having. We're going to make this infinite because we want to show the world in all its glory. We don't have a seed. We're going to do show coordinates for good practice. We're going to do always day and we're going to do perfect weather. Although weather is something that I will change later in order to explain more about the natural world um, and so on. That will do nicely and we'll click play. So let's first of all start by um, exploring just what Minecraft does in terms of being a, a digital model for the natural world. And so we'll just start immediately. Wow. So this, yeah, basically Minecraft is split up into biomes and we already have an entire a YouTube video live stream about biomes, but let's just recap. So over here we have, I mean, we've just started in an ice biome with a little bit of sandy island in the middle. I've never, I've never, I've never landed in a place like this before. Look at this. So we're actually, I mean, this might be, minus the sand, this might actually be the Arctic, possibly. And if we head down onto the sand, you'll notice that the first thing we see is a polar bear. And that's because we have ice here. There's a baby polar bear. Hey, little guy. Yeah, I'll just back off. Um, and so we have polar bears on the ice. And that's the great thing about biomes in Minecraft. There's another one. The great thing about biomes in Minecraft is that they carry with them certain settings that mean that things only spawn, i.e. animals only appear, um, or plants. Certain plants only appear in a given biome which is fantastic. So we'll leave the polar bears behind and we'll take our little um, self over to Jurassic Island here, which uh, we're going to explore as a completely different um, biome. And you can see there's mixed biomes. For those of you who have been with me now for the last few weeks, we can see in here that we have a slightly different shade of grass to here. So this is maybe something like meadow, uh, flowery meadow, and this is maybe jungle. Um, etc. And you can see that there's different trees. Now when I go down and show you what those different trees are, we're just going to take these trees and we're going to ask what they are by taking them there. So that's acacia. So that's an acacia tree. Um, and we also have these sort of rock formations 
that are, that, I mean, go against gravity largely, but that's fine. Uh, we have villages, so this would be plains, because down here, this would be a plains biome. Down here we have uh, birch trees, and we have oak trees. Um, and from those trees, villages are made, and tools and things are made. We also have, uh, there's a desert biome, so if we head over here to the desert biome, in fact, I know what that is, that, that, not this grass, but the lighter grass that you can see in the distance there, that's what's called the savanna biome, and we can create savanna space, which I'm just going to fly over the desert to see here. But you can see we also have a desert biome. Let me show you something when we get into the heart of this desert, before I head over to the savanna. If I head into the heart of the, the desert, and then I do something like uh, weather, this is a command, rain, it doesn't rain. It says changing to rainy weather, but it doesn't because we're in a desert biome um, with nice desert biome water. That's a nice colour of water compared to that, right? Look at that. Um, we'll come back to rivers shortly. But if we head over into the savanna while the, the weather is raining, we should, depending on the biome, I think it's still caught in desert there. There we are. As soon as we head out towards the coast, it starts raining. So we can create weather conditions as well. And those weather conditions are dependent on, if we head back to the desert, they're dependent on the biome. And so as a model for the natural world, we have a vast range of biomes. There's warm ocean, there's deep warm ocean, there's shallow warm ocean, there's cold ocean, uh, and again, deep and shallow cold ocean. There is river biomes where you only get river fish, whereas in the warm oceans you would get tropical fish. Um, there is desert, there's Arctic. Uh, whoops, yeah, we're getting that's because of the rain, that's because of the river and this patch of green here. So you can see that the rain comes in like you would have a little oasis or whatever, but generally it doesn't. If we head over, we've got more savanna. We also have underground biomes. So we have cave biomes as well, which I'll try and find for you. Let's see if we can find out. Oh, wow. What is going on over there? Natural. Let's head. In fact, I'm going to make the weather clear. Let's just do that. Um, and so if we're going to start by, and this is what Minecraft is for me. My, uh, Minecraft is a, is, a, is a model. There's a cave. I'll head down to, into that shortly. Uh, Minecraft is a model for the real world. And if we head down here, we've got waterfalls. And then we've also got different types of grasses. We can grow different types of plants. We've got tall grass, we've got short grass, um, we've got ferns, we have flowers, different types of flowers. So that's a dandelion. And we have different types of flowers. And this is the stuff that comes with Minecraft, bearing in mind we can also make anything we want. So if we don't want dandelions, but we actually want, um, here's some cave systems. Uh, we don't want dandelions, we actually want some, um, peony roses, then we can make peony roses. But if we head down into caves, you also find, I'm just going to brighten this up with torches, but as you head down into caves, you'll find that we have entire cave systems with spiders and, uh, oops, there's more, and the kids can go caving. And we've got iron ore and we've got coal down here. We'll also find very rarely, but we'll find diamonds and we'll also find emeralds. Uh, down here as well. We'll find some lapis lazuli. There we go. And we'll find underground water sources as well. And so just exploring that as the immediate, you haven't created anything, you've just, um, that was the wrong way, I think it was here. There we are. All we've done is we've explored a world and said, what is it we, what is it we want this to look like? Where do we want to go? And what do we want to say? We're doing a project on um, the savanna and the animals of the savanna. This is what we would do. Now, after this, I'm going to take you to something like We Are the Rangers, where we can explore exactly that, the animals of the savanna. But before we do that, I want to show you animals in general. So Minecraft has a series of... Uh, we'll deal with plants and crops and things shortly. We'll deal with animals first. Minecraft has a series of animals. Uh, they're called mobs, ignoring the monsters. Everybody talks about, you know, if you ask kids about Minecraft, they'll go, yeah, there's creepers and there's zombies and there's skeletons. Um, but actually, if we want to look at animals, we'll just head down. 
and the look of something like. I'm just going to put in there spawn. And what we'll get is, I'll just get rid of all of this, and we'll just spawn a bunch of things. Spawn a chicken, a cow, a pig, a sheep, a wolf, a polar bear, an ocelot, a cat, and a moo. Let's ignore the mushroom just now. Let's uh, get a bat. So, a chicken, a cow, a pig, a sheep, a wolf. Sheep's out of here, look. Sheep's like, I knew you were going to do that. I knew it. So is the chicken, incidentally. <laughs> um, the polar bear. Now the wolf's away. And uh, the ocelot. Look at that wee thing. They, um... Uh, yes, Oscar, you can. So what, what you do... Uh, Oscar's asking, whoops, the wolf just killed the sheep. I knew it. the sheep should have got out of there way sooner. Bad boy. Um, now, what we... Uh, what we can do, Oscar, is Oscar's question on Twitch is, can you um, disable hostile mobs? Yes. What you can do with hostile mobs in Minecraft is if you go into settings and you go to peaceful, it means that you will get mobs, but you won't get hostile mobs. You can't disable wolves unless, because they're, they're not technically a hostile mob, even though they're hostile to rabbits and uh, sheep. Um, but you can make that peaceful. And if you want to get rid of all mobs, you go down to classroom settings and you click allow mobs no. Now watch what happens if I do this. All of my mobs disappear. And I can't make any other mobs appear. But if I go into settings and I go down to, whoops, show classroom settings, allow mobs, and make sure that I'm on peaceful, then I can have mobs, as you can see, there's a sheep, and sheep come in different colours, incidentally. You can have mobs, but you can't have, um, so let's just get these ones back up. Sorry, sheep, but I'm putting you back in the, uh, back in the place with the wolf. I I'd get out of there if I was you. Oh, dear. But this is nice, because in terms of um, a degree of, kind of, well, certainly lessons in biodiversity, we can look at predators. <laughs> um, and then we've got ocelots, which we popped in. We've got cats. That's a kitten, actually. There's a cat. Hey, little guy. And then we can also have bats, which general... And all of these have their own areas. So ocelots uh, will generally only spawn in jungles. Bats will only spawn in caves. Uh, wolves will only spawn in mountains, I believe. And uh, the rest, the sort of more docile creatures like sheep, uh, domesticated um, animals will... Will, um, they, they, they're across a number of biomes, but mainly plains. Now, whoops. Uh, yeah, you can. Um, you can also disable them using command blocks, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Oscar, tell me how you do that. So if I, here's, here's a question for you, Oscar, because I've been looking at this. Can I only disable wolves from spawning? If you have an answer to that, and the answer is yes, here's how, you would be my hero today. Oscar, ladies and gentlemen, is also in school age. So I'm basically challenging a student to help me <laughs> to, uh, to find a solution to a very real working problem that I have in one of my worlds. Oscar, over to you. Um, and so that's just some of our mobs. Let's, whoops, that's me brought up code again. Let me go and look at some of the other ones. So we'll just, um, we'll just clear these. What did we get to? We got up to uh, bats. So we'll take a parrot, a rabbit, a llama, horses, donkeys, and mules. And then the rest, I think, oh, there's um, tropical fish, cod, puffer fish, salmon, dolphins, sea turtles, pandas. Uh, what else have we got that's... Do, 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 do. Oh, spiders, although they're rather large. I'm going to show you something cool that we did with spiders once, though. Guardian, witch, case, spider, squid. I'm looking for anything that's not a bad mob. Pillager, ravager, NPC. Okay. So Oscar is answering me on Twitch. This is fantastic. Oscar, you're the man. So let's go back and look at parrots. Oh, lovely. Lovely. 
I want a red one. Typical. Oh, that's nice. He's nice. Surely there's a red parrot. There he is. Hey, little guy. Okay, so I've got red parrot, which is nice. Look at that. Uh, we've also got rabbits. Also hunted by wolves. We have llama. Mm -hmm. And they come in different colors. We also have horses, which do the same. We have donkeys and we have mules. Somebody want to tell me the difference? I don't know the difference biologically between a donkey and a mule. Uh, then, of, then we have tropical fish, although the issue is I don't know if tropical fish will live in this water. Yeah, they will. So we have some tropical fish. And then we also have some cod. And then we also have some puffer fish. That wee puffer fish there. When you attack him, he gets big. <laughs> So we can, we can set a couple of those off and when we attack them, they puff up and then they go away and then when you leave them alone, they go small again. Yeah, there he is. He's gone small again. How fantastic is that? <laughs> go on, go small again. Go, go, go. That's it, he's going small again. Brilliant, okay. Um, and so, I can make parrots dance, can I? How do I do that, Oscar? Um, so that's our puffer fish. So there's our, there's our nice mobs that we can do. Now, here's the thing, let me take you to another world. Robbie Hayes says, mules are made from one parent being a horse and another a donkey. They are just stronger donkeys, but they're sterile. So mules can't have mules. Is that what's going on? I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Look at that. So a donkey and a horse have a mule, but cannot then create lineage. Um, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to take you to two worlds to show you what we've done with mobs. Because here's the great thing about Minecraft and the worlds that we build is we can make those things anything you want. Good morning, Raja. Uh, well, actually, it's afternoon for you, Raja, right? Over there in Pakistan. Um, it's afternoon for you. So good afternoon, my friend. Um, so let's have a look. So what we've done is you'll see here that we have giraffes and we have... So we've... Got, and this is just a cow. You'll see their spawn cow. And if we head over to the giraffe, it's just spawn a llama. And we'll just spawn another one. Whoops. There we are. <laughs> it's an odd looking giraffe. Yep. Um, and then we've also got, uh, what were the lions? There's a lot, the lions were the ocelots. So you saw the size of those little ocelots, but actually we can spawn lions. And if we hit them, I trust you guys can hear that, right? Just like if we hit the elephant, which I shouldn't do, but we have elephant sounds. So we can give them the same sounds. Um, down there we have a little warthog. And these were all added by our team. So basically we um, we have incredible builders and we have incredible designers who then, you know, I, I can just say to them in a project, hey, we need elephants and they'll get me elephants. There goes a bee. Now, incidentally, Minecraft has bees. Um, Education Edition doesn't have bees. It hasn't been updated to, to, the, to the bee um, version yet. But Minecraft has bees now. They came out this year. But we had bees two years ago. So we made these using, let me see if I can catch them. In fact, I think it's just a bat. So let me just go in there and get a bat. So instead of spawning bats, we spawned bees. Oh, I can hear a guinea fowl. Can you hear that guinea fowl? So instead of chickens, we made guinea fowls, but I don't know where they are. There he is. Hey, little guy. Um, we also made, let me go and have a look at um, spiders. And what we did with the spiders was we wanted them to be somewhat, somewhat African, 
but we wanted them to be um, small because spiders are normally giant. They're normally really big. Um, but these are little small spiders and then they, they scurry around. And they kind of, I mean, I sat next to a spider once in South Africa um, and I kind of looked down at it thinking, in my country, they run away and it didn't. It just stared me out until I ran away. So that's kind of what they look like. We've also got snakes, but I can never remember what snakes are. What do we got? We've got chickens, cows, pigs, sheep. We've got the polar bear is the rhino. I know that much. So if we head down here and just put this here, we end up with a rhino with a really small head. He's fantastic. Um, we've also got pangolin, but I can't remember where they are either. So let's see if we can find them. Bats, parrots. I wonder what a mushroom was. It's probably still a mushroom. Rabbits, maybe? Llamas. Horses. Horses were zebra. Let's put them in. Donkeys and mules. Skeleton horses. Horses. Tropical fish. Cod. Salmon. Sea turtles. Pandas. Try a silver fish. I don't know. I just want to see if we can find everything because I can't for the life of me remember. Oh, I'm going to show you bees. Uh, bee hives in a second. Nope. I cannot think what that would be, but anyway, let's for let's uh, put out a silver fish and see what that is. Oh, it was yeah. So the silver fish was snakes. <laughs> Look at those things, and they're away into the undergrowth, and you never see them again. They disappear into the into the undergrowth in the grass. You'd never see them. Look at that. You would never know that was there. Good, huh? And then we also do, I thought that happened. And then we also did um, horses. So we created zebra. Not all of them come out with stripes for some reason, something to do with the, uh, the spawning. And then rabbits are rabbits. And so we were able to, and, and also the scenery, you'll see that the scenery looks nothing like um, the Minecraft, this is actually a model of a piece of topography from Botswana. And then what we've done is we've um, added the appropriate trees. These trees don't grow naturally in Minecraft, but we've made them and then had them dotted around the place. And then we've made the scenery. We have another one coming up soon, which is Kenya. We're building uh, a map of Kenya and we're having that put in with a, with a river basin and so on. Um, let me take you to another map and show you what we did with the others. Now, you'll notice that those ones... Yes, Oscar. Yeah, exactly. Oscar's just said, so you just retextured them, right? Yeah, we remodeled them using Blockbench and then we retextured them, um, which is, you know, that's it. And, um, and then we released them using the same names. But actually, in... I'll take you back to We Are The Rangers and show you why we made that world in a second. Because again, modeling and lessons in the natural world are really important. But... Um, What's that? It's the gold rush. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the bear. Where's the bear? Where's the bear? Uh, hang on a second, folks. I'll find it. It's not down there. I'll come back and show you beehives afterwards as well. I just need to find the bear. Tell me I've got the bear. Tell me that's. Here's the art world. Did anybody see it? There's our small South Africa world. I thought it would have been around about that because it was the same time. Man, I can't see that. 
Give me a second, I might have to go and load it from somewhere. I'm going to do one more search just to see if I can find it. I did. I found one, a past one called Bear. Solar, busy bees, wind power, break in, RC town. Uh, bear, bear, bear. It was called Bear. See, I'm looking at the pictures because I think I know. Social studies, Bear. Wow. Washington State Social Studies. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks very much, Susanna. Okay, so in this one, I'll just take you over here. The first thing we've done is we've created a model of a black bear because what we're trying to show is we're telling the story of Washington State history in this world. So the children are basically following this story up the bear's back and then they get taken to the different environments to learn. So in this case, we have three learning environments, the film studios, the Whitman mission, and the Pig Island, um, which are the three stories that we wanted to tell. And it all starts with heading over here to see Old Joseph. So Old Joseph is a black bear, and we can actually talk to Joseph. Welcome, young learners. I am Old Joseph from the Nez Perce tribe, and I have many years of wisdom. It's kind of like a spiritual bear. Um, I have lived in this area of the world for a very long time, and I've seen different types of people walk across these lands, and each season has been different. And then what they do is they follow the story. In 1607, the first permanent English settlement in the US. In 1776, the Declaration of Independence was written, and old Joseph tells us a bit about that. Um, and as we go further up, he tells us, follow the river, and we'll tell you these stories. In 1787, the Constitutional Convention, and the kids go off and kind of look at what that was. Jefferson becomes the third president. And in 1803, Jefferson buys Louisiana uh, territories from France and then here we have old Joseph who says some of the first travellers to my forest from a land far away were two men called Lewis and Clark help me to tell their story so what we do is we click on the film studios and we get taken to those old sort of 1800s um, late 1800s early 1900s film studios where the kids have then got to build the scenes the 10 scenes of what they believe were the most prominent of uh, Lewis and Clark's journey but in order to do that we had to create some of the creatures and so if we check these little guys out here let me just collect that we have prairie dogs so we've created prairie dogs that go in holes and then the kids have got to capture them because actually that's what um, Lewis and Clark did they stopped for two days on their journey and they collected prairie dogs because they were fascinated they'd never seen them before and they sent them back um, back east to sort of say look what we found what we've also done is we've made deer and they come in different colors so we just remodeled but you'll see that they're actually instead of just being called bear uh, sorry um polar bear or sheep they're actually called prairie dog beaver deer seal etc so if we get a beaver and we put that down we actually had beaver and we can put that in the right environment we can tell it only to spawn in the right place if we head over here as opposed to having squid in the water we could put seals in the water and the seals swim around uh, we also have buffalo or bison whichever way you look at it i know they're technically two different things uh, we have rats, because the rats were rife in the three guesses what they're made of. Anyone? You've already seen them today. And then we have um, eagles. And we put the eagles up into the air and the eagles soar. Now, the great thing about the eagles is two things. I think if I put another one up in the air there... No. Um, yeah, silverfish, Oscar. You're absolutely right. And look, this, these are dying. Look, my little, look, they're all dead. And the reason they're dead is because <laughs> eagles, eagles hunt them. So we've pop. There we go. So we've, we've made it so that eagles actually hunt prairie dogs and rats and rabbits. Um, 
And so we can, I don't know why there's deer up there. Sorry me guys, but you're just gonna have to go. Um, I think, I can't remember if we did it. Oh yeah, we did, we did a bear. And there's, so opposed to, as opposed to just old, uh, old Joseph, the black bear, we actually have bears that can wander around and do their thing. And so in terms of being able to make these things, anything we want in Minecraft, we can. So when people say to me, how does it model the natural world? I say, well, you tell me, what do you need? What do you need? And we'll make it happen. And so let's go back to um, We Are The Rangers. What we did with We Are The Rangers is we managed to build a series of lessons. This one is just um, World One. It's just where you get to go around and meet the rangers. So in this case, in fact, I'll take you back to the base. Base is over here. And there are uh, five rangers that you can meet. And this is all about teaching students what it is that rangers do. Um, so this one's more simple than some of the other ones. It didn't require a huge amount of natural world mechanics. But if we speak to Rokonga, or, uh, Rokonga says, hello and welcome to We Are The Rangers Education Map Number One. Check out the map, beh ba map behind me and go meet the rangers. And then we check the map. This is the map that we're on, as you can see. So we've got the little river delta and we've got the water hole, watering hole and we have the mountain and so on. And we're able to see all of that. But what we can do is we can click on Harrison. Harrison is a rhino ranger. He live, uh, lives here on the reserve day and night to help protect rhinos from poachers. He tracks rhinos that live in the reserve, helping to identify them. Find me on the red trail. And this is the, this is the nice thing. It's real simple. All we do is we then look for Harrison somewhere outside. So where are we going to find Harrison? There's Ian. There's Rukonga. Shirley. Somewhere around here is Harrison. And the kids have to go looking for the first Harrison. There's Wisdom. There he is. So there's Harrison down here. And this is Harrison 1. What does it mean to be a rhino ranger? Well, rhinos are under threat here. And this is what, so, and here's why. That's why I have to make it sure. And then what we do is we follow, the kids do like a mystery tour and they follow red. So like, oh, there's the next red. And there's one. And it's like a, basically that's animal tracks and traces. They're following a track. We can do it easier from the sky. And we follow the red trail all the way out until we find, and they would be doing this on the ground, of course, until we find, where are you, Harrison? There he is. We find Harrison here. Harrison, oh, I've missed Harrison too. Harrison two's out there somewhere. But Harrison one then says, and this is him with his radio and his camp. Um, Harrison three in this case says, this is my camp. I live in a tent right here on the reserve. It's important that when on duty, day or night, I am alert and can hear disturbances that might mean poachers have come for the rhino um, and so on. And then there's a green trail and there's a red trail, there's an orange trail, there's a pink trail and they can follow all of these people. Where's Harrison next? Harrison is here. There's, he's on this hill. Oh, that was Harrison too. I need to rename that. I track the rhinos that live on the reserve. We make sure that we track downwind because they have a strong sense of smell. And so suddenly the kids are learning about these animals and they might may or may not find one. Um, I know that Harrison does happen to be over here. I think this is his final one. There's the blue trail. We want to follow the blue trail. Um, so it's a really nice following adventure. If we have a piece of land, let's imagine we did have a reserve like this. We had a nice piece of land through which we wanted to teach. And we knew that this land was an accurate representation of a space that we owned. What we could do is we could teach by saying, follow this trail to find these real markers. In the real place, when you finally visit, if you're lucky enough to visit somewhere like South Africa or, or Botswana or whatever, when you visit there, you will find this exact space. You will find this exact um, camp. You will find this exact, almost like digital, um, what do you call it? Digital... Uh, geocaching and then Richard, uh, still Richard 3. Um, another conservation task we do is animal tagging and you'll notice that he's got the rhino beside him um, and he's been tagging that um, that rhino and so that gives you an idea of what we were doing with world one let me show you what we did with world two just in terms of again looking at this and then we'll go and have a look at sort of crops and things oh by the way uh, I'll show you in World 2 what we did with the scenery. There's no 
seen any like it in Minecraft. You can't, even though you have savanna biomes, you can't, we created the long grasses. So you'll see here, if we just float down here, the, the different landscape and the, this was all created by hand. Um, so all this, this is crops, really. If we click on it, it's, um, it's basically wheat and then a combination of grasses and tall grasses and then use that to create this lovely space. Now, in um, in lesson number two, it's it's a different landscape, but it is the next best thing to be in there, Barry. It is, the kids love it and they get it, you know? So when we speak to this guy here, Nigel, hey, Nigel, uh, I'm a bush pilot like Richard, who was in World One. I've seen conflicts between humans and elephants which have ended in injury or death for both. In some reserves, there may not be enough food for all the elephants and they decide crops uh, like sugarcane and pineapples make for a better meal. Follow the path to Ian to find out more about elephants' crop raiding. And so what we're really looking at in this is the... So we follow the path and we're trying to find Ian. And what we're looking at in this one is the conflict between elephants and humans. And so we're trying to tell story. Remember, every time we talk about these worlds, you, those of you who have been with me for the full um, sort of 20 days so far, we always talk about the environment, which is how do we create the right environment for children to feel like they're, they're able to learn in, in an accurate environment. Then mechanics, so things like NPCs or animals or um, machines or something in Minecraft that works. And then the third is, and most important, is narrative. How do we tell stories, i.e. through these characters, that tell the story of the, in this case, the animals or the, or, or the um, landscape or the people? So the delta is a permanent source of water. Even in the dry season, it makes this place attractive to humans and elephants alike, not to mention all the other thirsty animals that need the water too. But villagers in Garangi village have had some bad experiences with, ele with elephants. Go speak to them. So we're going to head over there. Lots of little typo there, I'll fix that. And then we have the Garangi village. And it's in here that we speak to people like Kameni. And Kameni says, I have to walk six kilometers each day to get to school. My parents are afraid that I will meet an elephant on the road. Last year, two people were killed by elephants on their way into town. I'm a little afraid. They are so very big, but we have been learning about them in school. They travel the same routes looking for water so they can be avoided. And this is all part of the education system that we're trying to put out there is actually, what are the ways we can do it? We can avoid this. What does Mache say? I'm a basket weaver. Baskets are important for storing seeds and carrying goods. We do not like elephants here. I do not trust them. I know that they raid the fields here, eat our crops to feed themselves. We can only grow enough food to feed our own family. So if elephants steal from us, we have nothing. Look at the language there. Um, if elephants steal from us, that's not that's not helpful. And so what we then do is we then go off to another village where they have an answer to what's going on. And that's where I bring in the bees. So this time when we head out to this separate village, we meet, and these are all based on real people. We worked with charities to base this on real people. So Beatrice, at school, we have been learning about elephants as a keystone species. It means they have a crucial role in the ecosystem. Without them, all of us would be in trouble. And then Baruti says we are also learning that elephants have uh, elephants move south in order. Eh, sorry, in the drier seasons, April to June, looking for water. They are naturally shy of humans and try to stay away. And so we can look at some of the the nature and things. This one's great. This is Disho. And Disho says this is our community chili plot. It isn't something we normally grow. It's not actually native to um, to Africa, uh, but we decided to try it as a safe way to deter elephants from crop, crop raiding. And what they do is, I think this is fascinating, we dry the chilies and mix them with elephant dung to make a chili mud pie. We set these on fire at field boundaries and the smell of the chili smoke keeps the elephants at bay. And it's working. This is happening in Botswana right now. So they're growing chilies. What it's also done is it's created a new economy for chili sales. So what they now do is they sell chilies and they've got their own breeds now of chili and stuff like that. And it's created this whole new um, economy. I'm sure there are people listening that would be like, hang on a minute, if it's not native. Um, but that's a, that's a whole different conversation, right? About um, how, we, how and why and where we use plants and invasive species and so on. This guy, this is amazing. Um, um, uh, Kegili, uh, 
has said, I have been practicing conservation agriculture for two years. It's much more difficult at the planting stage, but it can produce higher yields in smaller areas. I've produced 10 times the amount of millet of farmers with larger fields. So again, another way to do that is instead of having these huge fields that elephants can't help but go through, because hey, humans have taken up all this land, what if we changed our farming practices to make our farmings less land, but more, uh, more successful? And Loki, you can call an elephant here. Now here's the thing. Where's this guy? Is it's Joseph? That's it. Joseph, my neighbour, convinced me to try sustainable farming practices. The soil here is poor, but if we practice crop rotation and plant cover crops, the fields are fertile for a very long time. Um, I use beehives to keep the elephants out and sell honey. So what they've also realised is these beehives are made up as part of their fencing systems. They've discovered elephants, and I'm sure other creatures as well, but particularly elephants, hate bees. Bees sting elephants and elephants stay away from them. And what elephants have realised over the years that they've been doing this in Botswana is that elephants now know the sound of the hives and they stay away from them. So you'll notice if I put down a, let me just go to spawn and I'll just spawn a chicken or a, a guinea fowl, a cow, and then in this case we already have a sheep, which we know is, a, is, a, is an elephant. Guinea fowl, whoops, nothing happens. A cow, nothing happens. But if we spawn an elephant, the bees come out and they sting the elephant and the elephant runs away. There he goes, he's like, I am out of here. He's stuck on the hives at the moment, but he will get away. And so what we've done is we've yeah, they're shulkers, Oscar. That's all we've done. We've just made... And the bees come out. And when the elephant is far enough away, the bees go back to the hive. So it, for children learning about this, it's been a huge success, these five worlds. For children learning about this, they understand through the modelling of the natural world, elephants, bees, crops, land, plants, people. We can tell those stories and we can bring all of that to the fore by modeling it in a language, a digital language that they understand. They get mobs. You know, when I talk to adults about mobs, they're like, sorry, what? Kids get it. Kids get mobs. Kids get redstone. Kids get uh, NPCs and villagers and they get it. So we're really just teaching in their language. Um, I'll show you the third world because they, they're not all set in this in this scenery. Let me show you the third world, just in, in the interest of showing you how we tell stories through the natural world. Um, where, 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 where are we? Right, we're looking for We Are The Rangers World 3. We have a lot of people watching right now. We have an awful lot. We're up to 74 people watching, which is fab. So in this one, you'll see it's a, a now a completely different world. We've now got a, a huge uh, piece of water in there with the bridge. And what we do is we're actually making, in this case, we're making a rhino, so let me see, Jeremiah, orphanage manager. This is a rhino orphanage. Welcome to our rhino orphanage. Here we provide safe refuge for white rhinos that have been orphaned and would not survive in the bush. And what the kids have to do in this one is they have to deliver a rhino. They then learn about the veterinary um, processes of the rhino. All right, we go. They then go in and they, uh, they these are based on real rhino that, that, that exists just now, Lunga, and I can't remember the name of the other one. Faith, Lunga and Faith. And what they do is they then learn how to feed. Ah, all right, I'll open the door for you, shall I? Um, how to then feed and look after Lunga and Faith. And you'll see as we go along here, where are they? There we are. Oh, there's a lion in there with her. That's not very helpful. But anyway, there's little Lunga. And we've coded Minecraft in such a way that the rhino on this level never grow up. They're only ever small. They're not giant. 
And so that, that was just a piece of code that we did. And then they also learn how to look after um, Where's the baby? There we are, there's the baby. So we spawned a large one, but if you spawn a baby one, it never grows. Um, and so, and this is um, Lunga's natural boma, which is kind of like their natural environment. Uh, this space encourages Lunga to develop natural behaviors such as finding food, mud wallowing, before socializing with other rhinos in a final boma before they're then allowed out. Hey, little Lunga. Um, and so we have uh, we have that. And then the last part of this exercise is to head over the bridge because you're running out of um, space and you've got new funding and you need new space. So what you do is you head over to the bridge, over the bridge, and you're given a new, you know what's really cruel? Somebody has put a beehive on that side of the bridge and a beehive on that side of the bridge and put an elephant in the middle. That's awful. <laughs> Wasn't me. Or was it? Um, so, um, Sharon, who's, who's asking me on Twitch, how long does it take to create all of this? We've been working with Minecraft for, this is our 11th year, and something like these worlds would take us three to four months to build, including working with the organisations that we're working with, you know, the charitable foundations or whatever. Um, we may or may not require a trip to, in this case we didn't, but in some cases we take a trip to where we need to go. We do lots of photography, video, um, interviews with, with people and so on. Um, we map the land. If we're doing a topographically accurate one, like St Kilda, for example, we use topographical data, we map the land, photographs, video, etc. cetera. Um, and then we, so this would take something like this. Each one of these would have taken three months. I would say, yeah, 10 to, 10 to 12 weeks, probably max. Maybe a, maybe a little longer for some of them. Um, but we do also have projects that take us seven days. It just depends what you're looking for. Seven days, three months. We had the refugee crisis world that we built took us eight months um, over a series of years. Um, so what I mean by that is a lot of research. Then we built a bit of world. We then had play tests and children in testing it. And then we stopped, did more research, built a bit of world. Um, so yeah, three three months, three to four months for something this size. Um, and of course that three months comes with a price tag. This is the thing we quite often have people say to us, you know, we and I, I say this quite honestly, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a for profit organization, although we do a lot of work for charities and refugee crises and you know, gender equality. And we, we actually, you know, do a lot of free stuff as well. But where where we have to charge for those things, people then say to us, Sometimes, you know, but it's but it's just a Minecraft world. And I say to them, but you've asked us to build Botswana. You've asked us to build a real Niger Delta, you know, Niger Delta or, or, you know, Botswana Delta. You've asked us to create animals that don't exist. You've asked us to build a narrative that tells six stories of six rangers. Um, you know, if you were doing that even as PDFs, it's going to take you weeks of somebody's time. And so we just we have to consider that when we're sort of working with with clients. And so here what we do is you arrive here and you're given a big plot of land and then the children have to design the next BOMA. What does that look like? And it's from this post to that corner post to a corner post there across to a corner post there. You've bought this piece of land and you now have to make and I love this one. This is you. Your kids come up with the most amazing things. Um. Are these shared worlds? Yes. So, um, so Susanna, great question. Susanna on Twitch is asking, are these shared worlds where different learners interact with each other or not? Yes, they act as both. The great thing about Minecraft is you can play this on your own, which I'm doing right now, or you can have up to 30 other children inside looking for things together, discovering things together, writing journals together, keeping, um, uh, you know, breeding animals together, protecting animals together, um, collecting plants, growing plants together, all of that. Whatever you want them to do, they can do it together. And so in this one, they design their um, their own rhino enclosure. And the kids come up with the most amazing things for it. Uh, let me take you to world four. Oscar says he's not seeing the, the Twitch questions and, and comments. Um, We've also got people on Facebook. We've got people on um, 
Twitter, we've got people on Mixer, and we've got people on YouTube as well. Where are we? Ba -ba -ba -ba. What are we looking for? We're looking for We Are The Rangers World 4. I don't know what's going on there, Oscar. I don't know why that's happening to you. Uh, Western Hub. We are the Rangers five. Does that mean I missed four? Let me just check down the bottom. We are the Rangers world four. There we are. And then five's a good bit down. Okay, so in world four, we are in a shipping container, um, a shipping port. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find Pangolin. Pangolin are being, um, it's basically a, a, a detective story, this one. Pangolin are somewhere in there and they're being taken away. Um, I won't make any suggestions about where this might be, but there are certain countries in the world that um, traffic horrific, horrific, horrific numbers. Well, one is a horrific number um, for trafficking animals, but the, the, the container loads of these things, it's gross. Um, and basically what you do is you start at the security office down here and you are a detective trying to figure out how it's happening. Because let's face it, it doesn't happen when someone says, oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to capture some pangolin and then I'm going to sell them somewhere. There has to be a chain and that chain is, is full of enablers. And those enablers are everyone from security guards. Who are you? You caught me off guard. I was having a little nap. So there's our first clue. Guards napping. I'm supposed to be alert and uh, there's a typo. Check the ID of everyone entering the port. All traders report to the customs office where the administrators log and file their paperwork and tell them which quadrant their goods will be shipped from. Visit the port office manager. So then we're like, right. So of course, everybody who comes through this gate has to check in. So then we go check in and we tell this, this sort of narrative story. Who's this guy? So this is the port office manager. Welcome to Pango Docks. What an awful name. Um, Welcome to the port office. A great deal of goods produced here. Yada, yada, yada. It's a very busy place. Um, follow. My colleagues here will deal with all the customs paperwork. So then we're like, OK. So we go in and we speak to a customs officer. So everyone in here, someone in here knows that something is coming through here and it's all checked and so on. And then we follow the yellow trail, the green trail, the purple trail. And then eventually we get ourselves and I just need to double check this works. We're going to get ourselves a wolf. And we're going to get ourselves a lead. And we're going to get ourselves some bone. There's a dog handler in here who does all this for us. But right now, whoops. There we go. You give a dog a bone to get him friendly. And then... And then what we do is we walk the dog up and down. Now, at this point, we've discovered that we know that it's in the... I'm going to strangle the dog now. Sorry. But at this point, we know that it's somewhere in the red sector and it's somewhere near A because we've done all, we've, we've fished all the clues. Am I just dragging that dog along? I am. I'm such a bad pet owner. Um, and then what happens is, I wonder if I can go faster. Does he still come with me? He does. What a shame. And then we're going to head in here. There's giraffes. Somebody's... Somebody's let the giraffes out. And then as we're walking through this, and I, oh, he's not with me anymore, that's why. He will bark, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure where he's gonna bark, but somewhere around here, if we take the dog to the right place, come on, boy, if we take the dog to the right place, he will bark when he's near. Oh, look, pangolins are near. There they are. And we go in there and there's a pangolin in a cage. Look at that wee thing. And we find them and then we can go and make the arrests. So it's basically you become, sorry, I'm doing that. There's my other dog. Hey. So uh, let me just get rid of the dog. Yep, we'll leave you there. And so this is a detective story that allows uh, students to detect 
and find out who's at fault. Somebody didn't, somebody let a shipping container go that shouldn't have been. There's 26 on your roster, but you've signed for 27. And then we nail that person. Or, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anyone in the office. It was the security guard this whole time. He was the one that casually falls asleep and so on. And so um, that's, that's kind of, that's the point of world four. And again, we're just talking about the natural world. Let's stay with the theme. It's the natural world. How do we tell children's stories about the world around us, the plants, the animals, the weather conditions, the biomes, um, sustainability, the dangers to our world? How do we tell kids those stories using Minecraft? And then finally, ba -da -ba -da -bum. this is all free, by the way. If you have education edition, you can do all of the We Are The Rangers worlds for free. Let me go back up. I'm just looking for we are the on arrangers. World five. There we are. Oh, I don't have to leash the dog. It will follow you. Look at that. Um, Baramok on tw on Twitch says there's so much potential for creating learning experiences across a whole range of ages. Love the environments, mechanics and narratives in these worlds for scope of lots of creativity and learning solving. So let's head over to here. We're in a laboratory and inside this laboratory we have a map of Africa and some flashing lights. It's kind of like imagine um, Star Trek. We also have some DNA and what we're now doing is we have to go up outside so you'll see that there's an exit here and we head outside. Whoa, we could have taken a minecart but in this case we're not gonna. And we go up, up top and we find ourselves some poaching camps. So it's the same map that we were in before, we're, it takes us back full circle. We're now in the same map but we have to find poaching camps. And when we find those poaching camps, we find elephant tusks and elephant poop. We find elephant poop lying around, not, not in the camps, but we find hordes of tusks. And then what we do is, if I can find my way back in, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's down here into the secret laboratory. What we then do is in the secret laboratory, this is all about the science of conservation. What is the science that's behind it? Because it's not all about detective work and so on. And what we do is we come over to here to this machine and Dr. Morgan tells us, hello, my job is to use science to create elephant species maps with DNA data to help fight poachers. We need more DNA samples from elephants to help create our database. You can help by searching for elephant dung outside in the bush. Bring me some samples and drop them into the DNA sampler. And what we can do is, this is our DNA sampler. And when we drop poo in there, that happens and it tells us this goes green which tells us that the poo came from there let me just check why that's I just want to check something yeah so let's get ourselves more poo so Minecraft Education Edition why am I not getting poo? Now I'm going to have to find it. Great. So now, how did you spend this afternoon, Stephen, looking for poo in Minecraft? Um, so Susanna's question is, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find, there's our little pangolin and so on for our maps, because there's a mapping exercise as part of this as well. There's our little radio, which is sweet. This is all done um, by one of our builders um, called Dragnos, who is fantastic. Uh, he's one of the world's best, if not the world. In fact, he's the world's best. I'm just going to put it out there. Challenge me, if you will. It's a wither skeleton skull. That's poo, right? Let me see if it says poo. No, it's a wither skeleton skull. So where's the poo? Anyway, um, I know how to get it. Oscar says he's not... It is a weather skeleton skull, it just, it's, it's enabled poop. I don't know why it's, anyway, yeah, poop, there it is. So I can put poop in again. Ah, 
Right, you know what it is? I've done it already. I've already dropped the samples in and what happens is it tells you where they come from and then what you do is you drop the tusks in. So you go and get the tusks and when you drop them in, it then matches. There we go. So, so that's it started again. So let's drop, let me get some tusks and some poop. And then what happens is we say, okay, so elephant tusk that we found and the kids have to know where they found it. So elephant tusk was found, up. it was found outside, but the elephant came from there. See how that flashed on and off? So then the kids are like, right, now we need to put in the poop that we found. And that poop comes from down here. And so those two don't match. It's like a matching game. So then we have to go and find, then we go back upstairs and we get elephant tusks. I think because I'm taking the same elephant tusks, it's not going to work. But if we take elephant tusks from up top, we will get that from... Oh, it reset it. So it was. So those were matching elephant tusks. And then what we can do is we can say, right, so here's what we're going to do. And then we can go and arrest the people that were at a certain camp. for I mean, they all get arrested anyway, but we go and say to them, we know that you've been operating in these three areas of Africa and bringing elephants from these three areas of Africa. So it's all about the elephant wasn't necessarily, the tusks that you found weren't necessarily from Botswana. They might have been killed in Kenya. Um, and so on. And then they have all these experiments. So we can we're look at a conservation lab. Look at this. We've got plants in here that we can look after. And we've got uh, nuclear power. <laughs> Barney Calhoun. What's he saying? Nothing. He's just looking after whatever that is. Very good, Barney. Um, and so that's We Are the Rangers World. I'm going to show you one more before we finish. And it's, it's, to do, it's more to do with flowers and trees and crops. Um, this is a secret world that is not released yet, so you're getting a little sneak peek at this. I'm not going to tell you what it's for. I am just going to show you it. And so, uh, Susanna, I don't think I finished my answer to you. So my answer is... Um, education Edition... Um, is available if you have Office 365 education, which a huge number of schools do. And I mean, like millions and millions of schools have, have access to that. If we're talking about the UK specifically, yes, huge number of schools do. Um, Glasgow City Council do, Fife do, etc. But it used to be that you had to have a certain license. You had to have a, a, a particular license that within your Office 365 license, you had um, uh, you had Minecraft Education Edition as part of that. It was called an A3 license. What they've now done through to July is they've opened up Minecraft Education Edition for all and every education license. So if teachers have an A1 license, they have any sort of education license, they will automatically have Education Edition and can log in using their standard Office 365 login. Every student, every teacher through to July. I don't know what will happen after that. Um, I have my own thoughts and feelings on what should happen after that. But, but for now, everyone has access to it. And everyone who has Office 365 education account. Um, and that includes a lot of um, libraries and museums and things like that, which is fantastic as well. Uh, it's also if you do so if you do want to have ed education edition, you need it done on Office. Uh, you need to have an Office 365 EDU account. That said, we don't have to use education edition. Everything I'm showing you is in education edition because my clients want that. But if you wanted us as a client to build something, we would I we would build it Java. We would build which is the one everyone has at home. Um, generally and can be purchased for a one-off cost of 20 20 pounds i think we can do it on bedrock which then makes it accessible on xbox playstation nintendo switch ipad etc we can do it on education edition or we can do it on any mix or all um we're working with a client just now in canada that wants it on them all that want now that means more work for us and more time but ultimately it means that when it's released Anyone in the world who has any form of access to Minecraft can play your worlds. So what I wanted to show you this one uh, was the yard. This is a bee simulator that we are developing for schools. 
to look at biodiversity and um, uh, pollination. This is going to be looking at pollination. And what we've done is we've made a garden, a standard backyard, and we plan to have more of them in a kind of a row of houses, if you like. Um, but the idea is that you, you, you start to recognise and pollinate different types of flowers. Um, I won't go into details about how it all works because it's, 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 it's going to be gamified. It's going to be hugely complicated um, code wise. But there are different flowers and these are based on real flowers. So there's poppies in here and there's wheatgrass over here. and We have mushrooms and we have a peace lily. Um, over here and then over here we have a variety of different um, types of flowers and then the bees are going to be able to work with these flowers these plants there's also going to be uh, predators and there's going to be dangers so we're going to start looking at what it is that makes gardens operate um, and you're going to have beehives and you're going to compete and so on a nice clematis up there and, and so on it's called busy bees um, and it's coming soon. Um, it's almost ready for launch. Uh, but watch this space because we are, um, it's, an, it's going to be an education map. That's how it works. Um, it's going to be an education map and you're going to be able to play in this. But again, these are these are not entities like the bear or the rabbit. These are just made flowers. And then we can code these flowers to do something. Um, yeah, yeah, no. And, and Robbie's just put in Twitch there. Build It Scotland took a good while uh, to build and complete, I spent a lot of hours, 100 plus hours, adding in the buildings to the map. No, you're absolutely right, Robbie. Robbie was a partner of mine on BBC Build It Scotland project, where we built the whole of Scotland and then had the kids contribute with their own builds. And Robbie's talking about 100, um, 100 hours of time. And so, whew, through the handle of the, uh, of the fork there, like a pro. But basically... This is another way that we can look at the natural world. Let's look at the Great British Hedgerow, and we can do that over here with these hedges. Let's look at the um, let's look at the, uh, the, the uh, an American yard compared to a British yard. Let's look at what uh, the, the plants that we can get in Singapore compared to the plants that we can get in the British Isles. Let's look at the uh, the landscapes or the um, let's look at botanical gardens or. Uh, and how we nurture and foster that. What would the design of something like, like, like if you got an area this size, how would you design that? Like what would the whole design process be for that if you knew that you had to encompass 12 new plants, for example, in here. Up here and here, we have a little bird's nest, look at that, with yellow eggs in it, um, in this tree. The trees incidentally were handmade. I'm not even gonna, I mean, I personally didn't do it, but yeah. That is, uh, that is excruciating work and so on. Um, and so uh, I think I'm going to leave this stream here. I think I've covered almost everything I wanted to cover and really look out for this world coming very, very soon. But really what I'm trying to show in this stream is how does Minecraft model, how can Minecraft be used as a model specifically in these times of remote learning when we want children to be able to access the kind of learning about the outdoors and the spaces around them and the world and the, and biodiversity and nature in fact no i'll tell you what i'm going to show you one more thing before i finish but yeah we are, what what i'm trying to show is uh let's just go into the natural world there i want to show you a bit of coding because on top of this we can do coding um but this stream is all about how do we how do we take what minecraft does and and apply it to what we want and so i'm going to press c now and that's going to bring up our coding this is built into education edition it's not built into java it can be used but must be downloaded separately with bedrock and then i'm going to go into new project i'm just going to make sure you guys can see that i'm not sure you can no you can that's great and then i'm going to call that um biodiversity and in here we have the ability to control through code, computer studies, elements of the game. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in there, um, let's go for, on a forever loop, I am going to create, spawn an animal, 
called a wolf at a given location. Let's go into world. And then I'm just going to go and get a location. So just give me a second while I write this down. Minus 1332, 65, minus 1607. So that was minus 1332, 65, minus 1607. Okay. And so that is spawn a wolf at this location. If I press play, you see I'm going to spawn a bunch of them because I've asked for that. But what I want to do is space that out because what we're trying to create is a pattern of how things exist. So we're going to do wait 10 seconds, that's a thousand milliseconds, and spawn an animal, play. And what I'll do is I'll just do kill at E and we'll get rid of all of those first. So every 10 seconds now we're going to end up with a wolf. There he is. And then we'll wait another 10 seconds and we'll get another wolf. Let's just make sure we do that. Hey, yeah, you walk away and we'll get another wolf in a second. Pop. Here we are. And so that's every 10 seconds. But here's the thing. We know that in a biodiversity model we have, and we've already done this on another stream, but if we take coloured wool, for example, we're going to have... We're going to have our massive things like, say, plankton, for example, or um, insects. Well, then we're going to go the things that eat them. Then we're going to do the things that eat them. And then we're going to do the things that eat them. And then we're going to do humans. And that's kind of our biodiversity model. And we, and we only live if all of this works. And so wiping out plankton would be a nightmare for our planet. Wiping out our insect population would be a nightmare for our planet. Wiping out the birds that eat the insects would be a nightmare for our planet, and so on. And so we understand that these wolves only exist if they have something to eat. So we go back in here and we say to ourselves, okay, so let's wait. In fact, no, at the same time, let's do, but at the same time, we're going to spawn rabbits at the same location, but we're going to loop that Twenty times. So let's do this. So that means every 10 seconds we'll get a wolf, but we'll get 20 rabbits because rabbits breed faster than wolves. So there we go. So suddenly there's a bunch of rabbits and the wolves are all excited. That's great. In fact, let me just model that again. Let's do kill E. So we're going to start with 20 rabbits and one wolf. And then that wolf's, and you see the rabbits are going to go out there and they're going to multiply, etc, etc. There we go. Two wolves, 40 rabbits. This is good, right? But what if we did a thing where we said, on animal killed, this just sits at the side, we're going to do spawn a wolf at the location we gave. But we are going to, sorry, not, not animal, sorry, animal killed wolf spawn rabbits at that location. But we're going to loop that another 20 times. So that means every 10 seconds we have a wolf, a new wolf is born and 20 rabbits to keep the population flowing. And the wolves hunt the rabbits and there's a nice balance there. Maybe 20 is too much. Maybe we'd say five. There we go. But. If we start killing wolves, rabbits multiply further because we've not got the... So there we go, we'll get rid of this. So let's do this again. We're going to get five... Wo we're going to get one wolf and five rabbits. There we go. One wolf and five rabbits. It's quite a nice balance. By the time the wolf kills two or three of those, he's a baby wolf in this case. So he's off after that little rabbit. There's another one. So he's away, he's doing his wee bit, got it. And then this wolf's gonna go and do the same and we've got this nice balance. 
But what happens if, here we go, there's another one, they're off doing their bits of two wolves, three wolves. What if we take a sword, in this case, and we kill a wolf, as we did in Scotland? We come along and say, you know what, I'm just going to get rid of that. And we end up with loads of rabbits. And man, you know what, I'm going to kill that one as well. And I'm actually going to kill this one. Incidentally, rabbits eat your crops in Minecraft. And then we'll kill that one as well. And what we end up with is way too many rabbits. And even this wolf's kind of like, I don't know what to do. And we can't have wolves in Scotland. I don't want wolves in Scotland. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And there we go. And so what we're doing is using a piece of code, we're starting to create models for biodiversity. What happens when man has impact on this? What happens if we fish? Because we can do things like when fish killed, i.e. fish taken out of the water, do this. Make a coral die, for example. You can do things like um, if we go to blocks and we go to... Uh, replace with. So we can do um, on player swim in water, replace with air when block is coral. So then we're at, you know, from a radius of XXX. And what that means is whenever we swim, in fact, let me find your world that shows that. Let's do that. I think that would be quite neat to show you. Did we show that last time? Let me show it. I get carried away. Hopefully everyone's still with me. We still got a lot of people watching. So that's good. I'm going to just go into new world. I'm going to go into template and I'm just going to get warm ocean. Uh, there it is. Warm ocean biome. And we're just going to get ourselves a warm ocean. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say what we did before. It is, it's very much like Scratch and it's built in, Susanna. Um, Come on. I don't know why this has taken so long. It's, that's the second time it's done that to me today. So let's go back into biodiversity. Let's get rid of those. On player swim, replace water when block is red coral from, and I'm going to do, I want to go in and see if I can get, Well, that's fine. From two minus, sorry, two, two, minus two, and then minus two, minus two, two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to repeat it for blue coral. And I, no, 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 it's not air either, it's dead coral. If I go into dead, you'll see that there's dead tube coral rock appears. Dead tube coral rock. And dead bubble rock, that'll do. Two, two, minus two. So on player swim in water, replace dead corals wherever I go. And we know that this is true of, um, let me just put on settings. We know that this is true of the Great Barrier Reef, for example, more and more, or that, that beach in Thailand where the beach was filmed, the movie. It, it, it's dying. The whole thing's dying. So we're going to do always day. We're going to do perfect weather. And that's all. So now, whenever I walk around, the, cat, the coral's absolutely fine. But if I swim, so let's swim down here. And what starts to happen is, whenever I swim around, See the coral dying down there? That's now dead coral. And it's because it's replaced it. There's more dead coral. It's not it's not killing the, the, the yellow, but it is killing the red uh, where's the, and the pink. So let's see if we can kill some of... See, there's more. It's killing that. Let's change it to all. Let's go in here and just make sure that we're going to get um, pink. And what did we say? There was yep yellow as well right so let's do yellow so now when we swim around we're going to kill in a radius of two 
Am I doing something wrong? But it's only doing above me. 2, 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, 2. No, why is that not replaced with dead? Let's just do another. Just want to put in there. There we go. It's starting to die. You see the coral dying? And as the coral dies, the fish no longer spawn because tropical fish in Minecraft spawn when there's coral. It's part of their biome. And so if I just go around killing all this coral, we haven't killed that red stuff yet, but that's okay. If I go around killing all this coral, I'm not sure why we are not killing the pink. But that's okay, we'll just kill the yellow instead. <laughs> Maybe the pink is a different type and survives from this particular bacteria or whatever it is. <laughs> But anyway, you get the idea. Before you know it, we've effectively almost entirely killed a coral. What we can also do is we can also say, um, replace with air when block is dead. Brain coral. Um, in fact, no, you know what? I've got another way of doing that. In a forever loop. So then a forever loop is replace with air uh, and then wait. This is just an idea. I'm always thinking these things through. So replace with air and then wait just three seconds. And then we're just going to do from and we're going to do. Um, That's a shame. I kind of want to. Anyway, let's just do 20. No, we'll do 15 because I know it works. 15, 15, minus 15, minus 15, 15, 15. Uh, sorry, minus 15, minus 15, 15. And what that means is we're just going to wait and, if, and then slowly some of this is going to disappear. What, what type is that? It's the horn coral rock, right? So let's make sure that's the horn coral rock. Okay, play. So in a forever loop, there we go. And now the coral's disappearing, wherever I am. So not only am I turning it, but it will disappear as well. It's just sitting on a forever loop, is that? Why is that not disappearing? Anyway, you get the idea. We killed a lot of this. Is that because I did it on a forever loop and then pause? Yeah, but it's on a forever loop. Pause, pause, pause. Why is that not working? Anyway. Oh, it's dead brain, that's why. So we would just replace it there. I'm determined to make this work. That's dead brain coral. Anyway, you get the idea. We killed the coral and then eventually it disappeared. Uh, we can actually just put pause in between that. Try again. Nope, still not working. I need to look at the code for that. I need to work out why that's not working. Is it a different type of block, is it? Dead brain coral block. Dead bubble fire horn tube. So no dead brains there. Why is that not working? Yeah, dolphin, sorry, but I'm killing your. Let's go over here and see if it works with this. Let's change this. Because as we're swimming, we're killing it. Oh, there we go. Yep. And as we kill it, it just dies. There we go. So it's working now. And so we don't, we're, we're not even aware of it. We're just swimming around and it's dying. 
and as it's dying, it's disappearing. Gone, right? Tragic. Every three seconds. And that's actually what's happening around the world. It's, it's literally happening. That people are swimming, killing the corals, and then it's disappearing right in front of their eyes. How horrific, huh? Do you know, it's actually, apart from a couple of fish here, there's no fish anymore. The fish are all on the outskirts. How amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll finish this, oops, oh yeah, I'm killing it. I'll finish the stream there, but um, that was the natural world with Minecraft. Through code and some mechanics and some environment and some narrative, nothing, no story we want to tell is impossible. So thanks very much for your time. I will see you again at uh, six o'clock GMT, no, BST. The sun is shining. Uh, the sun is shining, but do please stay indoors Stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and stay sane. I'll see you in a few hours. Bye, everyone.